Hello, this is video number uh, 32 on my multivaluable calculus course. In this video, we're going to talk about the divergence theorem, which is the last theorem that we discuss in this class. Let E be a solid with boundary sigma oriented outward and F be a vector field. The divergence theorem tells us that the surface integral of F over S, which means the flux integral of F across uh, S sigma, is equal to the divergence. So you can think about the divergence as the derivative and once you integrate this derivative the integrand um, becomes the antiderivative which is f and the limits of integration go from sigma to the boundary of sigma or like endpoints of sigma. So it's kind of similar to the fundamental theorem of calculus that tells you if you want to integrate a function you evaluate the antiderivative at the endpoints. Now, so what are some examples? An example is if you have a sphere, then sigma would be the sphere. Um, the E would be the inside of the sphere. So this would be the sphere. E would be the ball, which means inside the sphere. And the orientation is outward. So this would be the orientation. Here's another example. You could have a cylinder. So that, that would mean it is including the lateral face of the cylinder, including the top, and including the bottom. So that would be our sigma. And uh, E would be inside the sphere. So E would be the region uh, that is enclosed by the, uh, by the cylinder. Okay, so let's do a couple of examples on this one. And after this, we will talk about all different techniques that we have learned in evaluating line integrals and surface integrals. So here is the first example. Suppose sigma is the sphere given by x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 1. So the first step would always be to draw the diagram. So that's a sigma. And then the orientation is given as outward, which matches the orientation of the um, divergence theorem and f of x y z is given as 5 x i plus y j plus uh, z k and we want to evaluate the surface integral of f ds so okay so we're going to find um, the region that the sigma encloses so what is the region that sigma encloses it is this ball so let's call that e e is the unit ball uh, this is also centered at the origin. So this is the unit ball centered at the origin. Now, we can evaluate this one by parameterizing sigma, but if you parameterize sigma and plug it in, it would get us a huge mess. It is possible to do this problem with parameterizing sigma, but we will use the divergence theorem. So we will apply the divergence theorem. Okay, so if I apply the divergence theorem, we get the surface integral of f dot n ds, and the orientation is outward, so it is a matching orientation, is equal to the triple integral over E of divergence of f dv. Now, what is divergence of f? It is partial of x, partial of the first component with respect to x, which is 5, partial of the second component with respect to y, which is 1, and partial of the third component with respect to z. So I'm going to write it down um, here. So this is the divergence, which is partial of 5x with respect to x, partial of y with respect to y, and partial of z with respect to z. So that's the divergence, and that dv. So let's evaluate that. That's the triple integral over e of 5 plus 1 plus 1, that's 7 dv. So that is 7. If you take out the 7, we get 7 times the volume of e. So this reduces our computation. So this is going to be 7 times, what is the volume? It is 4 thirds pi r squared. The radius is 1 because it's a sphere. So the volume of this ball becomes 4 thirds pi r, r cubed. Um, which is 28 pi over 3. So that would be our answer. Okay, let's look at 
one more example on this one. Let sigma be the unit cube with vertices 0, 0, 0. So let me draw that. So the vertices are uh, the origin 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. So these are the four uh, points. 1, 1, 0. So 1, 1, 0 is on the xy plane. And then we have 1, 0, 1. So this one is on the y. Um, or 1, 0, 1 is on the xz plane. But we have to have all of them. So I'm going to label the axes x, y, and z. And 0, 1, 1, so that's the uh, next uh, vertex. And finally, 1, 1, 1, which is this vertex right here. So 1, 1, 1 is right here. So this is our cube. And they said the orientation is inward. So up there, it's downward. To the, uh, on the right side, it's uh, to the left. Left is to the right. Bottom is up. Front. Um, is oriented backwards and back is oriented forward. So these are the orientations of the six faces of this. Okay, so we want to evaluate this surface integral. If we were to evaluate this one using the definition, we would have to have six different parametrizations. One for the top, one for the bottom, one for the face on the right, one for, for the face on the left, and one for the face on the back, and one for the face that is on the front. So we have to have six different parametrization. They are not difficult parametrizations, but as you see, the complication becomes uh, extremely complicated. It is possible to work uh, out the problem that way, though. Okay, so instead, we're going to use the divergence theorem. So E is the uh, cube bounded by sigma. Now, note that the orientation of sigma is opposite the orientation in the divergence theorem. So let f be this uh, vector field that they gave us, x squared i plus z cubed sine x minus 2xy j plus z squared plus e to the x k. So now we can say that by the divergence theorem, surface integral of f dot n ds, because the orientation is inward, it would have to be negative. It's negative triple integral of divergence of f dv. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and evaluate the divergence of this vector field. So the divergence would be partial of x squared with respect to x. So partial of x squared with respect to x, that would be 2x plus partial of this guy with respect to y. z cubed sine of x becomes 0, and the other one becomes negative 2y. And finally, the last portion is... Uh, partial of this one with respect to z, which is plus 2z. So this one, uh, dv over e. Now, this region is a cube, so it's actually a pretty easy, oh, and this is minus 2x, because we took the derivative with respect to y. Uh, and this is an easy integral to evaluate, because it's a cube, all of the limits are 0 to 1. So this would be 2z, dz, dy, dx. Any order of um, integration would work. So this is the type of problem that we have done before. How do we evaluate triple integrals? Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and evaluate the first integral. Integral of z to z is z squared. So that's z squared from z equals 0 to z equals 1, and then dy, dx. So this would be integral from 0 to 1, integral from 0 to 1. When we plug in 1, we get 1. When we plug in 0, we get 0. So 1 dy dx. Integral of 1 dy is y. And when we plug in 1 and 0, we get 1 also. And this one is 1. So the answer is 1, although I had a negative sign that I missed. So the answer is, in fact, negative 1. So to summarize what we did in this chapter was 
uh, we talked about two different things. We talked about line integrals and surface integrals. And each one of these were uh, two different kinds. So line integrals. The first kind of line integral that we talked about was a line integral of a scalar function. If you have a thin wire C whose density, which means mass over length, is um, f of x, y, z, then its total mass eva is evaluated by the line integral of f over c with respect to arc length. When to evaluate this one, we parameterize c by r of t, replace ds by r prime of t, magnitude of r prime of t dt, and then we evaluate. Note that this line integral does not depend on the orientation. Line integral of a vector field gives us the work done by the vector field along C. If the vector field is M and P, those are the components of your vector field, we could also write down this line integral as integral of M dx plus N dy plus P dz. There are four ways that we learned uh, to evaluate this line integral. The first one was using the definition. In order to do that, we parameterize our, uh, our curve so by r of t, and we substitute dr by r prime of t. Note that you also need to parameter, or you also need to substitute the vector field by the points. The points in the vector on the vector fields can be the vector field can be should be evaluated on the points of the curve. And once we do that, and we find the dot product with r prime, then we integrate from initial to terminal. Note that this a and b are initial and terminal. So this one is initial and this one is uh, terminal. So it is possible that A is less than B or the other way around. The second method was using the fundamental theorem of line integrals. That only works if the vector field is conservative. Then we evaluate the potential function at the terminal point and we subtract the potential function from at the initial point. The next method was using Green's theorem. So if you are given a region and the boundary of this region is oriented positively, which means either this, either this way, or if the region is between two curves, we orient the outward um, uh, counterclockwise and the inner uh, curve is going to be oriented clockwise. Then the line integral of m dx plus n dy would become n sub x minus m sub y, uh, to double integral of that, uh, over d. This is uh, very helpful when m and n are too complicated, but the difference of n sub x minus m sub y is simple, or if the parametrization of c is not easy. Next thing is the Stokes theorem. So this is the fourth method for evaluating uh, line integrals. If you are given a line integral of a, a vector field over a curve that is in three dimension, you find a surface sigma that has the same boundary as a C, and we check the orientation by the right hand rule, and then we apply the Stokes theorem. The next thing we learned in this chapter was uh, surface integrals. There are two different kinds of surface integrals. The first kind is surface integral of um, uh, scalar functions. That evaluates the total mass of the surface if the integrand is mass over area or mass density. So to evaluate that we parameterize our sigma by r of u v, we find ds by magnitude of r sub u cross r sub v, and then we evaluate the surface integral. This surface integral does not depend on, on the orientation. The next thing was um, flux integral or integrals, surface integrals of vector fields. Those evaluate the total rate of flow through the surface. There are three ways of evaluating these surface integrals. The first one is using the definition. For that, we parameterize our surface and we find uh, the normal vector using ru cross rv. It has to be checked, the orientation has to be checked in order to make sure that we have to use ru cross rv and not rv cross ru. After you plug in uh, that in, you look at the region r and you use whatever parameterization is best for r. It could be polar, it could be Cartesian, or it could be a change of variable. 
The Stokes theorem also uh, helps us evaluate surface integrals, but only when the integrand is curl of a vector field. If you have two surfaces with the same boundary, then the surface integral of curl over these two surfaces are the same. You have to make sure that the orientations match. And finally, the divergence theorem. That can only be applied to surfaces that are closed and the orientation is outward. If the orientation is inward, then you'll have to put a negative sign. So we change the surface integral to a triple integral over the region, and the integrand becomes divergence of the vector field. And that's the last thing we talked about in this chapter. Now, there are a couple of tips for simplifying our computation that we learned in this chapter. The first one was, if your surface is given by z equals f of x, y, then we can parameterize it by, parameterize the surface by x comma y comma f of x, y, r of x times uh, cross r of r of y, that cross product becomes negative f x, negative f y, and 1. And of, of, of course, its magnitude becomes square root of f of x squared plus f of y squared plus 1. And finally, if you have a sphere centered at the origin, you can parameterize it by v and theta because the radius is constant, radius rho is constant, and the cross product of r phi and r theta is rho sine phi times r of phi theta. And its magnitude is rho squared sine phi. And this brings me to the end of this video. I will see you in the next video.